think that for all the greats, like there has to be something that's that's pissing you off, something that you're fighting against. It, it can't. It, 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 there's no way you're gonna have peace of mind and still have the drive to succeed and to conquer the way the all-time greats do. The all-time greats have to have a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. If you don't have a chip on your shoulder, then you're not gonna be ever reach the heights or take the measures that it takes to become an all-time great. Yeah. Me, I had two chips. They robbed me at the Olympics, and I had a father that I separated from that I know in my heart didn't really want me to to succeed without him. So those were my chips. And because I had those chips, I can't lose. Because if I lose, he win. Mm. You understand me? So yeah. in my prime, if I lose, he win. Because he's saying I can't do it without him. And in my life, the way I was taught, the way I was brought up, all I need is God. Nothing against my dad, but all I need is God. So my, to me, God prepared you to get me to a certain level, but God took those roosters. God took a guy named Charlie Campbell. And you wouldn't know Charlie Campbell because he was a boxer back in the day, amateur boxer. But God showed me so much through Charlie Campbell that to this day, I still speak to Charlie Campbell because without Charlie Campbell, I might have never gotten to be Roy Jones Jr. Really? Charlie Campbell taught me so much about charisma that my father could never have taught me that it was unbelievable. Charlie Campbell beat all my father's fighters as amateurs that were in his weight class. Easily, almost every time, because he had charisma. Now, they were better than him, but he had charisma. And he beat them with that charisma. How did he beat them with charisma? Because he believed in himself, he had confidence, and he knew how to do stuff that made me love watching him. You understand me? And he wasn't the best puncher. He really didn't have the best boxing skills. But his emotions, he breathed with everything he did. Even though he was flapping, he had sharp breath with it. You understand mm. me? And to me, I was like, whoa. And he beating these guys that on my team. So they learn the same thing I'm learning, but they can't have that kind of charisma because my daddy won't allow them to beat them people. He won't allow them to perform with that kind of confidence. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So I need to learn how to do what he doing because if I can add what he doing to what we doing, now I got something. How did you incorporate it? Well, I started doing the stuff he did. <laughs> A little bit of it <laughs> until I figured out what it really was. You understand right, me? So some right. of the grunting, some of the moaning he did while he was fighting to show that he had breath control, I started doing it. Mm. So like when you hear Bruce Lee go, whoo, Charlie Campbell would do stuff like that in really? a boxing match. Now his punches were nearly as effective, were nearly as effective as the sound was, but he kept them on beat and in tune with the sound. So it made him look way better than he really was. <laughs> and he won the fights against these guys because these guys don't know how to do that. Wow. So I started copying some of it. Not all of it, but I started doing it, adding it to my stuff. When I met him, it became hell for all the little kids in the area. Really? What? <laughs> well, I learned charisma, something my daddy can't teach me, and he beat my daddy fighters. And uh. to me, these guys are older than me. I'm 12. They 17. He beating them. Mm. So they ought to be better at what we're doing than I am. Because mm. they're older and bigger than me. Right. He beating them. No, I got to get that. So I got that. So was it also like you obviously had animosity with your father. There was, there was, there was these, so you were looking for other ways to do it too. No, I had to find other ways. God had to talk to me in other ways. If God didn't speak to me other ways, here, here's the real deal. What people don't understand. There's nothing against my father. It's just kind of our destiny, Right. When I'm lying, this, this is why I tell people that nature is also a Bible, right? When a lion get a certain age, his dad will kick him out. He got to go. You got to go get your own pride because this is my pride. Mm. And that's kind of how me and my father were. Mm. So it's like at a young age, I knew I was going to have to go because just the way things shaped up. You understand me? So me growing up watching, even these guys I'm watching before me, I watched all of them get to the age, but... My daddy would never allow would never allow them to be as confident and as charismatic as Charlie Campbell was because he didn't allow that. Because mm, he was the boss. He's the boss. He but, was in control of everything. But he ain't got to fight nobody. Right. So then, after the '76 Olympics, God gave me a second confirmation. Howard Davis Jr. won the Val Barker Cup. I mean, he was the best fighter at the Olympics, but he probably was the only one of them gold medalists that didn't become world champion. Mm. Why? Because his dad had made him wait too long. 
So he waited so long that when he finally fought Jim Watt, he couldn't beat Jim Watt because in Howard Davis, the fire had died. Now, in his daddy, the fire still was there. But mm. guess what? His daddy ain't got to fight Jim Watt. Right. How it does. <laughs> right. You understand me? That was my second confirmation that when I get old enough, I got to go. Yeah. You understand me? So it's like I start to understand. And like I said, nature has always been my Bible. So people always say, why you love animals? Why you love chickens? Why? That's where I learned God's teachings from. Because God made those animals and people can't change them. Mm. You understand me? You can neuter them. But when you neuter them, you change them to a whole nother animal. Right. And to me, in society, sometimes that's what they're trying to do to us. They're trying to neuter us. Yes. So when they neuter us, we don't fight back. Well, that's a giant thing with men today. This is what I'm trying to tell you. That's what toxic masculinity this and what, all that bullshit. This is what I'm trying to tell you. They're trying yeah. to mentally neuter us. Yes. When they neuter, when you neuter a horse, he becomes a bland. Gelding. Yeah, he yeah. again, he don't, he don't fight back no more. Right. He don't care no more. Right. You understand me? So it's like, if you neuter a man, he becomes nothing. He yeah. don't care no more. He ain't going to fight back. He ain't going to stand up for himself. Exactly. Because he ain't got no what God gave. You took that out. You feel me? And yeah. to me, that's emotionally, mentally, is what they try to do to us without physically doing it. So that was a problem that me and my father also had. And people say, well, why are you so against what goes on? Well, to me, that's what he was trying to do. But what I learned is, and this is going to take you down that road too, I used to hunt when I was a kid, right? We would hunt squirrels. When we hunt squirrel, there would be some squirrels that would have a penis but no balls. Because the other squirrels bit their balls off. The daddy. The daddy did it? The daddy have a nest about anywhere from 10 to 25 females. Every time one of them have a little babies, he goes and bites the nuts out of all the males <laughs> because he wants no competition. That's no, listen, but you, gotta know, but you gotta know this now. I get it. So this <laughs> shows me he can't do it physically, but this is what he's doing. I watched him do it to all these other guys I told you about mm, yeah. before me. They can't beat Charlie Campbell because they're geldings. Uh, Charlie Campbell's a stud. <laughs> yeah. He ain't better than them. He ain't stronger than them. He ain't even a better puncher than them. But in, in, in his mind, he's a stud. Mm. In their mind, they're geldings. Because mm. my dad has made them so, he's mentally beat them down so low that they have no real fight back in them. Because mm. they got to be second to my father first. I can't be that guy. Mm. If you're going to rule the world, you ain't never seen a gilding rule the world in breeding. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> you understand me? Now, you see some fast gildings because yeah. they just fast naturally. and But they're not going to rule the past because right. once you cut the balls out of them, he's no more man. Yeah. You feel me? I do. So it's like I be saying, you know, it's like nothing personal against nobody. I don't care. You do what you want to do. But for me, I couldn't be world champion if I let my father make me a gilding. Mentally and emotionally. Mm, you understand me? I so do. I could not stay there and become a gilding like I watched them do before me and expect to be Roy Jones Jr. that you know today. It just couldn't happen. That's a difficult balance with some trainers, right? Because some That's trainers big... were fighters and they're tough guys. Yep. And they don't want to let the other guys surpass them. Yeah. That's a lot of one of the reasons why a lot of fighters don't make good trainers. And that's why a lot of father and son relationships don't work as fighters because yeah. the, the father don't want to let the son grow up. Mm -hmm. And in order to stop him from growing up, you got to almost turn him into a gilding. Yeah. So that he'll go for anything and not fight you back. Yeah, it, it usually works out in a weird way. It's very rare that a father son fight coach 